Um, so let's go ahead and she said to go ahead and get started. They went into the other sessions. I, I hope they're, they, if they understood what I was saying and said, they popped, they popped into the other sessions and they're going to let people know that that link's been updated. Okay. All right. So, uh, Tina and Rachel, you have a big responsibility because now you have to disseminate all of this information to everybody else at your schools. <laughs> and Lynn. All right. And Lynn. Hi. Okay. So, uh, Greg, um, usually does an intro, but we don't need to know about me. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so. I'm Shelly. I teach at Swan River School. I've been teaching for 23 years. This is, um, I'm a, yeah. I love it. So I changed the name of this presentation because if I put Google Earth, everybody freaks out. So I specifically named it Think Outside the Box because I want you to explore and understand like how a picture book can relate to Google Earth. And like this one, where are you from? And this one, the day the crayons quit, we're going to look at Tour Builder. So everybody thinks picture books are just for kids, like little kids, and that's not true. Um, if anybody has seen uh, this picture book, the words in here are unreal, and the graphics and the uh, just the vocabulary. So don't ever be afraid to use picture books, even for your high school and your college kids. Um, so, Rachel, what grade do you teach? Uh, great question. I don't really know. Oh. Uh, I just accepted a new position. I'm serious. Um, I just accepted a new position at Corvallis Schools as an online teacher. Okay. And um, we are not sure what I'll be teaching. We're thinking maybe fourth, fifth. My experience, most of my experience in the classroom is first and second. So. Okay. Okay, so you can go little, and I'm going to show you some examples. And then Lynn behind Tina, what do you teach? I teach fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay, so this will be kind of fun because I teach fifth, and so we're kind of, and, and you can see, Tina, we'll see how low you can take these as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And just so you know, uh, I was in a very 80s mood when I made this. So, um, and I didn't do it right. Okay, so I had planned, uh, and everything I made, I made in um, Google Slides. So this is kind of a fun um, way to spice up your slide deck. And I had planned for this, uh, but we're not going to do the breakout room since it's just the four of us. I'll come back to you. Um, I'm going to give you a lot of information and then time to explore because I want this in your hands so you can make it relevant to your um, class. And then we're going to do uh, a my map activity where you're actually going to um, learn how to make a map interactive and share it with your kids. So I really want you to think outside the box. Like I said, um, as soon as you hear Google Earth, people freak out and you don't need to freak out. It is way easier than, um, than you think. And they've, the new Google Earth has a little sidebar with this magical uh, icon called Voyager. And it's like a little ship wheel. And that is your key to pre-made lessons by PBS. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's my favorite thing. So uh, three years ago, I had the opportunity to actually go to Google headquarters with Jeff and Dean and uh, take some geo classes with 90 other educators from around the world and the United States. And we, it was the most humbling experience because we had people in this conference who their districts didn't allow G Suite tools or, or Google, and they found workarounds. And it was just such a can-do attitude. Um, and I, that's what I want you to take away from this, is that there's nothing you can't do. That's really poor English, but you can do this. And even the littles can do it, I promise. So what we're going to do is, 
I've got to bring this down a little. Hold on a sec. I'm just going to bring this down. Okay, so I don't like that it's up there. Can you guys see my screen all funky? Hmm. Let me stop share for just a second. Okay, I'm going to give you, actually I wanna share because I wanna show you how to do something super cool. So I'm gonna share again just for a second. Hey, and Shelly, just so you know, we are getting a few more people that, and, and I'm, if I miss you asking me something, it's because I'm trying my best to get people in here that want to be in here. Okay. Okay. No problemo. And sorry about that mix up, Kim. Okay. No worries. Right. Thanks for getting me in. <laughs> Okay, so um, I don't know if any of you do presenting uh, or even with your class. So when you just go to, I'm going to share my screen and try it again. I really want this smaller. Okay, when you are in, can everybody see my screen? Just holler out. Okay, so if this is my slide deck that I want to present, when you go into present mode, you have that little toolbar down below and it's really annoying because if you have any kind of writing or something, you have to wait for it to go down. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick that I learned from I did a conference online for Camp Chromebook in Oregon, and this guy, Chris Bach, taught me this trick that is amazing. So up here, if you notice, if you go up to right here where it says edit slide, right there, and you highlight that and write the word preview, spell it correctly, preview, question mark, RM equals, minimal, then you highlight it, control C, open a new tab, place it in your Omnibox and enter. Now when you present, you don't have this little toolbar popping up in your presentations and you simply just go through your slide deck. So. Pretty cool feature. All right, so Google, again, that's my biggest thing is just, you can do this. So everybody says, well, I don't even know where to start. So you just start with an idea. And I talked about this in my other sessions. My staff here at school is so good at backwards design planning that I can literally go to them with an idea because I'm an idea person. And I'm like, oh, we could do this and this. And um, sometimes, you know, the planning part of it, I get a little scatterbrained. So they're always like, give me your idea, Shelly. And then they help me plan backwards. So I start with a lesson idea and here's a prime example. So I was helping the first grade teacher do something with Google Earth. And they had a student who was in Nicaragua while during the school year for a month. And so they were kind of trying to remote and this was before COVID. And I was like, well, let's do, you know, Google Earth and, and Street View and uh, and she like her eyes got as big as silver dollars. So I was like, no, 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 I'll do it. It's super, it's doable. You can do this with first graders. So I just want you to understand that when I did this, I made the slide deck and see there's, I didn't do that. There's that annoying um, toolbar, but I just want to show it to you larger. Maybe not, not going to load, not going to wait. Maybe not. Okay, so what I did was I wanted the kids because we 
We live in Big Fork, so we have two stoplights, literally one at the beginning of the town and one at the end of the town. And I wanted kids to understand the concept of where our school was in relation to Nicaragua. So I made these videos using Screencastify, and I showed them where our school is, and we played this whole class, and it took them from our school to Nicaragua and back, and you can fly in and out. Guys, I just want you to understand that we are in Big Fork, Montana, and Google. So when you type an address into Google Earth, it'll fly you in there, and then you type in the other one. I also took them on little 360 views, and I'll teach you how to take the link from where you are in Google Earth and put it into a slide deck so that they're not going super crazy. Then we had them do this Nicaragua Street View versus Big Fork Street View. Now, let's hope it loads. Oh, that one's not. Okay. So what I did was I put the link right in there and it's going to fly them directly into Google Earth. So that they're not launching it. They're not going to googleearth.com. They are just getting my link. And we'll see if it loads. Oh, I'm going to be really bummed if it doesn't load because, but then again, this morning has been a little crazy anyway, so we'll just go with it. So here we go, very slowly. You can see it's down here, trying to load. Perfect. So now I have this street view where the kids are going to look around. They're, you know, wow, look at that street art. Not that they would know what that is, but look at the dirt, look at, you know, the, the building, the signs, the trucks. And so we're talking about all the vocabulary, and you can have this up on the board, and you can be talking and, and doing this whole class as well as um, them having it. And look at the building. So one of the students, now this is first grade, one of the kids said, Mrs. Hensley, that building has three stories, and we don't have a building over two stories in Big Fork, um, and this one back here. So they were noticing every little, um, every little detail, and they were, they were really amazed with all of these power lines, and um, somebody noticed that one didn't have a helmet. Uh, so they, they get very creative. And then in Big Fork, you'll, so now I want them to see what it looks like. And nothing is loading. There we go. So it's going to take a minute for that one. And then you can see in that slide deck, we did a comparison. So, and even if your littles are too little to type, you can print that one slide deck out and, you know, download it as PDF, print it out, whatever, um, and have them write it as well. So here's our street. <laughs> what do you notice? Very different, right? They notice how clean our streets were, which is pretty cool, and our fire station. And there's a, one of our stoplights. And if you went down the highway, you could see at the very, very end our other highway, our other stoplight. So it's a really cool activity for kids to experience differences and then write about it. So again, that was with first grade. You are never, they're never too young. As long as you're in there and you're putting in the link, then it, it's safe for them to explore that. Okay. Any questions? Nope. No questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is I think I already have it. I want to move this a little. Can I move that bar? Move to bottom. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. These are all links for you guys. So every one that is underlined, this is um, Google Earth Outreach, and it already has maps and places for you to explore and tips for learning, um, 
And I've also put a link to Donnie and Eric. They have amazing resources on Google Earth. And Tour Builder, we're going to talk about because Tour Builder is where I have taken this uh, book right here called The Day the Crayons Quit. And then the second book is, um, you know, they, that they come back. So I got the idea, well, let's take the crayons on an adventure. And where did they go while they were on strike? So this is an example. Uh, this is turquoise crayon. And hi, it's awesome, turquoise crayon here. I'm on the top of the Eiffel Tower and it's very pointy. So I made the kids create a tour and then they used Google Earth to go to different places. Now the cool part about this is all of this writing happened in Google Docs first and we had a chance to edit and then they simply copy and paste it into uh, Tour Builder. So again, you're getting writing, you can work on figurative language, you can work on, uh, you know, the paragraph outline formula, anything you can, you can relate it to Google Earth, I promise. I also gave you This slide deck, which is something I presented on a long time ago, um, and this goes through the process of how to do that activity and how to get to Tour Builder, what the writing process looked like if we just did a letter versus leveling up and doing um, an actual tour builder. So there's more resources in here for you. I really want to share this one for you. This was an epic fail. This lesson and Google Earth, you are constantly um, revising because I had all these grandiose ideas. Oh my gosh, they're going to go to the seven wonders of the world. They're going to go to amusement park. They're going to go to a state park, a national park. And oh my gosh, my kids, it was a nightmare. So we revamped it to where I had to go back and they had to really learn Tour Builder and I made a tour first and then I showed them. And then in Google Earth, we narrowed it down to um, a, a country, somewhere in the United States, somewhere in Montana and one of their choice. So it was too overwhelming the first time I just let him go on Google Earth and it, oh my gosh, it was, and of course it was like the one where my principal was, um, you know, evaluating me and watching me and it was just, oh, we went down rabbit holes. So I really, please learn from my failures and really, if you're going to have the older kids, fourth and fifth can totally do this, um, but really make a slide deck where you have, um, you know, it, it laid out and only pick four places at first because it was just too overwhelming. The other thing I really want to encourage, please, 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 the first 10 minutes, let them just go on Google Earth and put in their address. Let them find their home because I can tell you, even at our Geo Summit with a bunch of adults and teachers, when you go into the Google store, they have all of these screens up and every single one of us put in our address and showed each other where we lived. So let them do that because if we want to do it, they want to do it. And then once they get that out of their system, you're good. All right. I'm going to stop sharing for just a second and ask if we have any questions. I'm throwing a lot at you. Crickets. Crickets. Come on, you guys. Hey, if, if you guys could turn on your video, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so, all right, any for the lower grades? Jenny, what do you teach? Jenny Wade, I see you. And Christy, what do you teach? And Debbie and Kim? Unmute. I teach fifth through eight. Okay, fifth through eight, great. Kim, what do you teach? 
Uh, second grade. Okay. Debbie? Debbie, you're muted. <laughs> I'm a parent in special ed middle school. Okay, so middle school, all right. And then Christy? I teach third grade. Third grade. And I hope I'm saying this right. Is it Alita? Alita just joined, Shelly. Okay. All right. So we're ready to go on. All right. I'm going to share. All right, I'm going to close out of these so everything runs. Uh, something I learned about literally you guys last night um, because I'm that total crazy person um, where I challenge myself every night to learn something new. And whether it's a little tip and trick in Google or whatever, I have to learn something new. Uh, so last night I, and I take classes on, um, with EdTech team. And so I'm taking a class on Google Earth as well, uh, because no, I don't know everything. I'm just passionate about it. But last night I found a street art one that was so cool. And so I also teach middle school art and I'm looking, always looking for um, fun ways to incorporate it. And this shows different street art around world and then if you just click on these um, and again perhaps uh, you know you should um, preview this before is all I'm gonna say because uh, you know sometimes on Google Earth you get different things but so here is some incredible street art and if you click on it it takes you to the collection no it doesn't um, just kidding uh, let's try this one. That's why you check the links before, but okay. So here's some murals and then you can have the kids, I mean, create art, create a street art. Um, and you can talk about, you know, did this artist have permission? Is it something that's graffiti and talk about the difference? Uh, but then you could have them make their own um, street art. Like what would they do in their classroom if they could decorate their classroom? Uh, it's just, I highly recommend just exploring these and going for it. Then this one is Instant Street View. Again, I learned about this one last night. I did not know about it. So if you just type in an address, and yes, of course, the kids weren't, are going um, to want to do that, but you would have pre-made addresses where you would want them to go, not their homes. So if I just did our school, you guys get to see our school. And we're going to do Swan Highway, Big Fork, Montana. No, I don't want, I want Big Fork. Okay, there's our school. And that's our gym, which is almost as big as our <laughs> old school. So I'm coming to you from the other side. Uh, and that's it. And we're surrounded by cows and fields and mountains. This in the winter, you guys, is stunning. Um, but I really, I close my blinds because I don't want to look so it's depressing. Um, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Anyway, so that's Instant Street View. And it would be fun to do, you know, neighboring schools, or if you're doing a collaboration with a school, you could put in their address, and uh, it's just a fun way. GeoGuessr is another fun one, but I would like you to have the account, not your kids, and then you would pull it up and play it as a whole class, and you try to guess where it is around the world. Um, it's super fun, and I don't do well at the game, but it is super fun. So those are just some quick ways to um, get you started exploring. Then I was really in an 80s mood, you guys, sorry, like click the earth. Uh, so if you click this earth, it's going to take you to Google Earth. 
and you launch the Earth. There it goes. It's going to take a little bit because whatever reason. And that's what you're going to do when we do exploring time. And I'm going to give you, in just a minute, I'm going to give you some exploring time. Then these are other totally rad ideas. Google Cultural Institute. If you have not um, been there, that is another great resource. Um, but again, please, we're going to, when I teach you how to do the link, uh, just to the picture or the, the exhibit you want to look at because there's, it's art, and that's all I'm going to say. Uh, and when you teach fifth grade boys, you know, it's, yeah, art. Um, this is super fun. If you've ever done this, if you take a selfie and it tells you what uh, famous art pieces you look like, 99% um, of the time I come out as a male. Um, one time I even had a beard, which was very fascinating. Um, but that's kind of a fun thing to do. And then you can have them explore, and it's an app on your phone as well. So you could do it on your phone and um, then look at the painting and have them explore the artist or whatever you'd like. So check this site out because it is phenomenal. And Google Earth Explorer, we're going to talk about that. Ice Hotels, Taj Mahal. Then this is where in Google Earth, you guys, once it launches, this is your tool, this Voyager right here. When you click Voyager, you are going into a rabbit hole that I'm not sure you'll be able to come out of. Because if you simply scroll down, I never let my kids play games when we're doing it, so we just forget it. Um, you have layers, street view, nature, culture, travel, and then bingo, education. And these lessons are done by PBS, and they're phenomenal. And I was just earlier, I was using the example. So if you read this book, Bird Builds a Nest, yes, it seems very, um, you know, basic and whatever. And your older kids at first might be a little, you know, ah, but once you read the book, you're talking about the art, whatever, then you come down here and global bird watching. Okay, so you can then start exploring and it takes you and slides you in to these different places where these beautiful birds are um, and a puffin and so and each it's going to take a while to load and each one of these uh, this arrow right here you'll notice the next Sanctuary comes up and it flies you out and takes you to the next one. And then if you want to learn more, I usually just, you know, Google the Rose Sanctuary. And then, um, but it just takes the kids all over the world. And it started with a picture book idea. Um, the other one is, you know, if you're doing animal reports, um, read about armadillos. If you're doing, um, this is one of my favorite books. Sorry, just saw my double chin. Um, <laughs> This is one of my favorite books, uh, Don't Let Them Disappear, about endangered species. So you can really explore some endangered species on um, Google Earth as well. And politics aside, don't look at the last name. This book is stunning because of the pictures. And um, it has vocabulary in it. Um, and it talks about different animals. And it, it's, it's a, just a beautiful book. So. I'm going to take you down to, we're going to go back to Voyager, and I'm just going to take education super quickly, and then I'll give you guys time to just jump into this. So, Underground Railroad, it's a little older, it's, um, Poetry Around the World, uh, Rediscovering, um, the other one, Earth Ecosystems. So, we all, you know, have science, and we have ecosystems, and different aspects of it. So this will take you into the lesson. And what I do is on a Google slide, I will copy the link and I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. And I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to call this and we're going to say slides.new. And that 
start the new slide right in your drive, little shortcut. And let's say I was doing a lesson on ecosystem. And I'm going to type the word, uh, let's put ecosystem. Okay, so I'm gonna make this super basic, but if I'm over here and I want them to explore this and only this, I'm going to go up to my Omnibox, I'm going to Control C or Command C if you're on a uh, Mac, I'm going to Control C, I'm going to go back to my ecosystem, and of course I would design this way differently, but I'm just showing you. So you're gonna highlight your word and you're gonna say control K. That opens it up to put the link to an outside web site or a slide within the slide deck. We want an outside one. So I'm gonna say control V and I'm going to apply. So now my students would click here. Notice it says Google Earth, and it's taking me right there. And don't you just love the new preview um, setting in slides? Oh, makes my day. So there's my link. Now the kids know. So again, that was highlight the word, and you've gone over to where you want them to go. That's how I got the street view. And I control C, and then when I put it into my slide deck, I highlight the word, and I control K and control V. All right, so I'm back here and just explore. Those are all links, uh, my maps. So I'm gonna give you like about 10 to 15 minutes to explore some links and then we're gonna learn how to do my map after you do that. But we're only one, um, I'm gonna stop share. There's so there's few of us in here where I think we can just kind of talk um, together. So if you want to open up a new tab, do you guys have the hey, link to the slide deck? Hey Shelly, can you just can you just back up for just a second? I think a little clarification because I I heard you say this yesterday too in one of your presentations. Did you say that if you just type in the slides dot so nope. it takes you it it's a shortcut and it takes you into your drive automatically it does that yes oh, so okay. slides.new docs.new sheets.new forms.new it just is it's just a nice little shortcut to take you right in there wow cool okay yeah so if you guys um i'm just going to stay right here if you want to open a new tab do you all have give me a thumbs up or talk if you have access to the slide deck Okay, so if you want to just click on some of those links in another tab and explore, I'm going to stay right here and answer some questions, but I want you to go to Google Earth. I want you to go to Voyager. I want you to explore some of these, and then I kind of want to talk about if you say, okay, this is cool, but I need a lesson. I need a lesson idea. Can you link the slides again? Yes. In the chat, let's see here. I think outside the box. That link that's that link that's there is the slide link to your slide deck. Just oh, did you put it in chat? I put it in the chat. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Did they get it? It doesn't show up in chat unless you were in when you put that. So when you oh, join the group, oh, yeah, you join yeah. the group late, yeah. you can't see old chats. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. That needs to be Thanks, fixed. Rachel. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to be fixed because Meet does that too and it drives me bonkers. Oh, and this is another fun picture book, The Narwhal. So, um, and then you can, it's like a little glittery, um, but then you can research narwhals and where they live. Okay, so I'm here to answer questions as you're exploring. Because you have to have questions. I know you.
Shelly, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I'm just curious. I took your class last year and mm -hmm. I kind of explored some of these things last year. I'm just curious um, of some of these tools, what are new ones to you that you implemented during uh, the fourth quarter? So my maps, which we're going to do next, um, that one was life changing for me because I had done my maps and it was like, we did it with water cycle or we, you know, added where animals lived or that sort of thing. But I did one where it talked about family and that's the one we're going to look at. And it was so cool to see my kids talk about their family. And we were very specific, you know, not sharing, you know, <laughs> addresses and, and that sort of thing. But, um, they made connections with each other that were mind blowing to me. It just like when they, when you see this map at a whole, at a glance, you're like, Oh, I have friends in here. I have relatives there. And then, then we just started this whole conversation and it, we, yeah. And then we took it a step further and we talked about, you know, food. And then we talked about different recipes. And then we went into this whole, like, you know, food truck thing. If we were to start a food truck, it just went down a rabbit hole that I just was not expecting. Um, and then the street art one that I just learned about last night, like that's going to be fun. So we're going to do some artwork and we're going to do, you know, different ideas. And I do, um, I looked up cause I paint the ceiling tiles. I don't know if your school lets you, but, uh, I'm going to have the kids do some painting on, on the, the tiles because I just think it would be so cool to, you know, do a two tile mural or whatever. And you're going to have to do the math in it. You're going to have to do, you know, the paint color and, and. So definitely my maps and tour builder were super fun during remote. Shelly, you're going to look this, this great again. You're going to love the ceiling tile when you start letting your kids, my classroom in Alaska was um, the kids it were based on what presentation they were doing and they would, they could not wait when they got into class, when they were sophomores to get an opportunity to, to do a ceiling tile for their presentation and it actually got so bad that we used all the ceiling tiles in my room and the and we were out in the hallway in yeah the, in that's exact well I, i've done it in art in my you know because i teach middle school art so we did it in the art room but now we're starting to come down the hallway in the class yeah. you know in there but i never thought to do it with my fifth graders and i was like why they're fine they can do it just as well yeah. so yeah i'm super excited so did you give them parameters where they had to like, or they just could do anything from their presentation? Well, they had to do, it had to be related to, to, um, to their presentation to toss. So we had, I mean, throughout the school year, you know, not every kid could, you could do one. And um, so we had to, there, there was some parameters. That, I mean, of course it had to be appropriate to be posted all the time, but um, it was pretty cool. Cause when you walk down the hallway and you walked into my classroom, you saw essentially world history uh, oh. throughout the entire year because some kids would do it in the fall. Some kids would do it in the spring, depending on what their topics were. So it was pretty cool. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Any other ideas, questions? Is that Deanna Horsens or a different Deanna? Yes, it's Deanna Horsens. Hi, put your video on, girl. What are you thinking? I am lost in the street art. You can't. I know, me. right? Oh my gosh, I have not seen this. I just saw it last because I'm taking that uh, ed tech team class online, and so I was, Ooh. you know, doing homework, and it was like. Oh my gosh. It opened up a whole new world. Shelly, there's a, there's a guy in, in Edmonton um, that runs a, a distance education center. His name's Terry Godwalt. Have you ever heard of Terry? It, no. Okay. And he, he does a lot of, um, he, he runs a, it's, it's more um, like we connected with his kids and or with him and his program from Alaska and he has, he has people that he lines up all over the world. And one of the, one of the sessions that he does in the year is, is street art. And um, I'm going to, I'll find some contact info for you 
it, it might not be today, but, um, and I'll get you that info and you, you can connect live. Your class can connect live with, um, we, we did, we did one where, um, we had an artist in who was doing street art to protest in Saudi Arabia and she connected and she got sent to jail because of it. And, um, they connected with her and we did a couple other ones. We did one in Ramallah, Palestine too, um, with some street artists, but there's all wow. kinds of, there's some out there where you can, you, you can literally get, get your class connected live like this using video. Yeah. This is where I, I told you yesterday, we've been, I've been doing this for 12, 13 years and there's play, there's really cool things that you can do all over the world and get your kids live with, with video. Yeah. You know, I've only like the science, I, I, I guess I've never, I don't know the science aspect of it. Like we did coral live and you know, we've, we've done a ton of those, but I've never even thought to go the art route, but I'm super excited. Yeah. Send me definitely, definitely send me that information. Yeah. yeah so you guys on the call, uh, Greg has done this in Alaska for years. It was, he was doing remote learning before it was <laughs> a thing. <laughs> Before everybody was being forced to do it, we were trying right? to talk about how cool it was. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. I totally get it. That is awesome. And Deanna did something, right, Deanna? This is uh, great. That Greg, I've emailed you a few times. I don't know. You probably don't remember. You probably email a million people. But I did the Golden Eagles project with my third graders, and I did the mountain lion one with sixth graders when I was teaching sixth grade through the inspired classroom. Yeah. What's your last name? Horsons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. Definitely. Yeah. And, and those, those, for, for those of you that are on the call that don't know if you, if you haven't heard inspired classroom has programs that are interactive. And since I retired uh, two years ago and started working with, Allie and Kathleen on some of these projects. One of my goals in to add to the, to enhance the projects is to create student collaboration and get students, your students collaborating with other students. And we, we've had some, we've had some luck and, and we've moved forward certainly from where, where they were with those programs when they first started. But now um, really one of my goals is to get kids working with other kids in multiple different places at the same time using video because that's what we did up there in Alaska. So if you if you're looking for something, some things as you guys go through these distance learning situations that you're being thrust into now, um, Inspired Classroom has a lot of programs that are are there that kids can work on from home as well as if you're whether you're in school or not, you know, live. And then you add a little Google Earth and you guys, the next activity, you're going to see this my map and then you guys can collaborate, but that you can all be on one map and give editing rights to the kids and then they could make this amazing map. Uh, Shelly, I'm already going to, I'm already getting ready to contact my colleague up in Alaska because using Google Earth as an intro, when you start collaborating with somebody, we have a what we call a meet and greet and we do things and share things about our community and stuff, but to add Google earth to the mix, I, I need to, I need to remind him that there's some really cool tools available that would enhance those meet and greet situations. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. we did, a, um, we use Soundtrap and we actually composed music with a class in, um, we were in, she was in Spain and it was so cool because we matched the kids up. And then they would lay a track and then we would lay a track. They would lay a track. We would lay a track. And we came out with this like crazy, you know, little pieces of music. Um, but we went into Google earth first just to see where their school was. And they did that with ours. And it was just, it was so awesome. Yeah. I am not a music composer. Just saying, <laughs> luckily I got the teacher. So our, our piece sounded really good because she was the teacher, but anyway. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through my maps. If you've had some time to explore, and again, that presentation is, you know, you guys file, make a copy, whatever you need to do um, to go back to these resources at all times. So I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to take you to 
the my map activity and so I'll X out of these guys. All right, this is the one I was talking about during, and it doesn't have their last name, so I thought it was okay to share. Um, but this is where you start a map, and then just like with anything, it's super easy to share. And when you share, you can give people editing rights, and so obviously anybody with a link, and then I just push this map out through Google Classroom. I put the link out in Google Classroom, then they click on it, and if you start to look at that, look at a cluster of us, shocker, in, in um, Montana, have a bunch of friends and family in California. So if you click on this, I taught them how to insert a picture, how to, after the title, put their name, and how to add pictures in the description. So again, in my instructions, it says, let's get talking to family and friends. Where do they live? Please do not, all caps, um, put their exact address, general area, um, even a state. I didn't think they, you know, they didn't even have to have the town. I did the town um, because I didn't put any identifying um, information on here. So Encinitas is where I grew up. This is my favorite Mexican food restaurant. And if it doesn't have bars on the window, then forget it. Don't even go. Um, it's not authentic. And then we started realizing, oh, look, I have friends there. And then somebody down here, when I click on his icon, maybe, whoa, I went too deep, sorry. So I click on this one. And this is Landon. And San Diego is where my mom is from. I love to visit there because it's fun to see my family and um, to go to Legoland and visit SeaWorld. And then he put in his pictures. So you're doing writing, you're doing, you know, inserting pictures, you're doing different things. And you can take this writing as in depth as you'd like. Um, Deanna and I used to do a thing called Pen Pal Schools. Um, and she had this whole form already done in, you know, um, Google Docs and the kids just typed it in and then she collected that as a writing assignment as well. So she's assessing their writing, but yet they're collaborating and working with kids, which was super fun. So if you look at this as a whole, my kids have friends and family all over the United States, but also in other countries. And during this time, it was super fun. I had one kid who got stranded in Japan. Um, not super fun that he was stranded, but anyway, um, he was uh, in Japan visiting family and COVID happened and he couldn't get back. So the fact that we went remote was fabulous for him because he got to do everything. Um, but he, you know, had family in Japan. Then you go over here and we have, uh, Landon had family in Rotterdam and actually I have family in Rotterdam. So Landon and I found out that we had a lot of connections and these were connections that I don't know if you would have made had we been in the classroom because it's not like we do a lot of that. But in this new book that I just bought, where are you from? This is going to be um, the springboard for my next Google Map activity where we're going to read all about this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And it talks about where he becomes. So then it's going to be a, um, or where they're from, um, an activity that they do with their parents as well, you know, researching um, their grandparents and their family tree. And of course, make the family tree in Google Drawings or however. Um, and then bring it into to my maps. So this was just a super fun way during um, remote learning to connect everybody. And they got to see, you know, we are more alike than different. And we have a lot of similarities. And usually in school, you, you know, you, it's just, it's too many differences. But if we start looking at how we're alike, um, then it's, I, I like that much better. So I'm going to, teach you how to do this and then i have a map that in the think outside the box on the first second slide sorry um this one right here we're going to click this link and then you'll be live on that map 
but this is what you're going to do. So you are my friends and right now you are in Missoula, Montana. Some of you will just say we're August Institute. So I'm going to go to Missoula. Now, right away, this is what comes up. It's a basic marker and it has this. Notice I want my name next to it. So I'm going to first press this plus and add it to the map. Now I can edit this. So I'm going to take my pencil, click that. Notice this comes highlighted now. So I'm gonna say Missoula and I'm gonna say Shelly because I added this. Now we're gonna do it on the other map, but I just wanna show you real quickly before I open the other map. Then I'm going to add my details, add details. Hello friends. Okay, I'm going to save. Now, notice I had pictures on the other one. You just go here to camera and I'm going to search an image and I'm going to say Missoula, Montana. I'm going to add an image and select. Then I'm going to plus sign, add another one, select and I'm going to save. Now, to change this marker, I'm going to hit the bucket and I wanna change it to yellow and I wanna look at the icons and the kids will spend a lot of time here so you kinda of have to you know, curtail that a little bit, um, which is exactly what's happening to me right now. So I'm just going to, and again, inappropriate, uh, icons, we talked about that. And no, you may not put that. So I'm just going to put a stake, whatever. Um, and I said, okay. And I'm going to close out of that. And I'm done. And then if you notice over here, Missoula and Shelly. So in ours, if you click on this link right here, you notice I have an interactive map. And I already added Swan Lake on here. So it's going to take us to Swan Lake because this is where I live. And they actually took us to the town of Swan Lake. Um, and I live closer up, not in the town of Swan Lake, but up here, way up here. Okay. So you get to pick your base map when you do this. And I always like the, this one right here. So I picked this map. And so what you guys are going to do is you're going to add your favorite place around the world. So let's say I loved Puerto Rico, cause I do. I'm gonna hit Puerto Rico. It's going to take me to Puerto Rico. I wanna add it to the map. So I'm gonna say add, and I'm gonna to have to go in a little because this is, you can't see the title up there. But if I were to edit, I think it said, I don't. So I'm gonna say Puerto Rico and then I'll put Shelly. And then here's my title. My favorite place is Rincon. Okay. All right, I'm gonna save. I'm going to add a picture and I'm going to go to search and I'm gonna say Rincon Puerto Rico. And there we go. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these are my photos because I do, uh, Deanna got me into local Google guides and it's super fun. And I'm gonna select and I'm gonna save. I'm going to change my bucket to green because I'm going to add a palm tree and more icons, there's my palm tree and okay and done. So now you see I've added Swan Lake and Puerto Rico. So I would like you guys to click on the link and I'm gonna stay on here and answer any questions when you're inserting your place on the map, but tell me your favorite place. Oh, questions?
Anybody? Yes, I have a question. Yes. I, I was playing and I wasn't paying attention. Because... <laughs> okay. Uh, do, is the link the one in the chat or is it in the slide deck? It's in the slide deck on slide number two, two at the very bottom, but I could put it in the chat. Nope. No, no, no. I'd rather it be in the slide deck. That's easier. I'm going okay. there right now. And I updated the link again in the chat for a couple people that just, or one other person that just came in. Okay. So if you need help, but you should be able to put in a place, add, and then as we go, you'll be able to see people adding their favorite places. And this is a fun activity to do with the class because I'm doing um, states and we're going to do interactive um, Google Maps with our states. And uh, so just, I mean, it's, it's the, the possibilities are endless, I guess is what I'm saying. And I tend to always start with a picture book. I don't know why that's my default, um, but you can start with anything, any lesson idea. And for Montana, you know, they have the new social studies standards coming down the pipes and every single one of you, number three is geography. And even in kindergarten, the use of maps and other representations to describe place characteristics. So that street view is a perfect example. And if you don't think kinders can pick out the difference between the two streets, they can. Um, and all the way up to, you know, sixth and six through eight, they have number three, identify and label US regions, territories, states, and their capitals, major cities, create and organize and present geographic information to show settlement patterns in the United States, including impacts on tribal land. So don't even get me started on IEFA and how you could incorporate this into those lessons. It's just endless. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody on this map. Did I do something wrong? I think I'm on there. I'm still working though. I gotta get a photo. Okay, get a photo. I'm on it too, but I'm having a hard time figuring it out. A little oh, bit. there you are. I just had to refresh. <laughs> okay, so having a hard time figuring out what? I I'm playing still. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me know if you need help. Look at this. Where is this? Oh, went too much in. Beachlands, Oregon Coast Walk. Mm, let's see that. Okay, we need some pictures. So Costa Rica. And the other thing I like about this, oh, I love Costa Rica. Yes. Um, the other thing I love about this is you can see right away. So I usually have this up on the smart board while the kids are going and I can literally look at the table of contents and be like, Hey, Shelly, you didn't capitalize Swan Lake or Hey, Shelly, you didn't have, you know, this, so you can click on it immediately and go, Oh, no pictures. You need to add pictures. Oh, you need more writing. Remember I wanted that paragraph. And so it's super fun to see it. And the kids love um, watching it happen live. <laughs> Bless you. So like I would look down and go, who did Oahu? Lynn did. Lynn did. So what you would do is you would take your pencil and go edit. And right after, just click off of it. And how do you spell your name? L-Y-N-N. Perfect. And then you would just put your name and then you're writing and save. And because you as the teacher have editing rights, you can kind of help your kids along who, you know, um, I did one of these for water cycle and it was their form. It was their assessment. And so instead of that, you know, test that you give them where it says, uh, you know, what is the water cycle, whatever their test basically um, was this Google map. And they had to insert different pictures of the water cycle and tell me where three of the vocabulary word, they had to use the vocabulary words and tell me what is happening 
um, in that. So we had like Niagara Falls, we had Zimbabwe. I mean, we had all these cool, um, and some kids stayed local. And then they talked about the parts of the water cycle. So they made it relevant to where they lived or to somewhere they had traveled. And you could assess right away whether or not they got the concept of the water cycle by the end of the unit. Okay, and it is 920. Um, this map will stay live, you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing and come back. And any questions, I threw a ton at you. Um, the only one I really didn't show you how to do is Tour Builder, but I put enough tutorials on there for you guys to go in and check those out. Questions, thoughts? Could you use it? Could you see yourself using it? Yes, totally. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just slow this morning. I'm still trying to drink my coffee. I know, I just, I just finished my coffee. <laughs> I can't believe you're up and rolling so early and already at work. You're doing I know, this. right? Um, I'm a sleeper. No, I'm a sleeper. I wrote, in that little doc you put in there, I put in the idea of that. Like, I think this is so good on so many levels. You can use it to, like, in third, even in third grade, we do the whole social studies thing. We start with community, like our town, and then we just keep going out further and further, and then our the big cities around us, and then our state. And like, you could literally use this map for the entire year for that unit. Like, we absolutely building it. And as we learn about places and kids sign things or kids travel to places, like this could be the coolest thing by the end of the year. Right. And, and my biggest thing with technology is, and Deanne and I train a lot of you know, in, in other states and, and di around the area. And my biggest thing with technology is please don't just put technology in front of students to put technology in front of students. Just because you have a device does not mean it's technology. Whereas I look at that Google map and I go, okay, if I were doing that lesson five years ago and I didn't have Chromebooks and I didn't have access to this, what would that have looked like? Well, it would have looked like kids coming up to a board or a big map and pointing to where they were or putting a sticky note or that. Whereas when you bring in this layer of Google Maps, it transforms your lesson into something they could have done, they could not have done prior. So that's the way I want you to think of this. Yes, it is awesome. I've used it before, but not, I don't know. It's, so, it's not my go-to, it's one of my weaknesses. So I'm really, really glad that I've got a little push today. So. You did it, here you go. Pua. No. <laughs> Okay, so if there's not any other questions, Greg. Yeah, so you guys, um, if you would, if you're wanting to get renewal credits, you need to put your name and that statement, renewal credits or something that effect in the chat. Um, and I will save the chat. And I really apologize for the mix up in the, in the beginning, you know, it's just like Shelly said, when you start using technology, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday too. There's going to be some glitches sometimes, and and <laughs> I keep bringing back the whole. I changed everybody's slide color background when I when we did the slideshow, and I don't know what happened to our Google document that all of us at Inspired Classroom and and um, Blackfoot are using to organize this, but I'm not sure how that how it how it happened but anyway it did happen and there was some mix up so i know i almost feel like that missed part of um the presentation this morning i almost feel like i want to offer it again i don't know if they can stick me in the schedule but well we did we did rec i mean it is recorded and and oh, okay so if some of the people that missed this will have the opportunity to go back and and look at um, oh, perfect. Okay. Did. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, and my contact information is at the end of this slide presentation. So if you guys um, want to collaborate or if you have ideas, uh, just let me know. And, and yeah. yeah and, and if any of you guys, if any of you guys are looking for stuff from Inspired Classroom, feel free to reach out to me too. And, um, or if you want to do some collaboration with schools other play, in other places, um, 
and, and work with kids that again, this Shelly, you, you said, I'm, I'm sitting here think wishing, dang it. I wish I would have had that four years ago when we, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to share this with Rob too. Cause he, Rob Sparks, my colleague up in Alaska, who's still, he, he, they, his kids create a map of all the places that they've connected with and all the, all the kids that they've worked with around the world. And it's oh. a world map and this tool would be so cool to add to that arsenal of, um, of, of things to help those, those kids with that, creating that. It, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. I love it. And don't be scared of it. Like that's what you, you need to tell your colleagues back then. Like, don't be scared. It's okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Greg. It was so nice meeting you. Thank you. I don't think I have any more sessions. So, um, but I'll email you and we'll connect again because that was yeah, really I don't have, I, I, thank you. I don't have any more sessions either. I was just paired up with, matched up with you. So that, that's good. So everybody, thanks for coming in. And again, thank Blackfoot for um, sponsoring this and, and bringing this uh, to everybody. So that's a yes. good thing. Thanks, Shelly. And hey, I, right, to meet them. I, I, I reached out to Rob and, and getting current contact info for the, Center for Global Education is the name of the outfit in Edmonton. And, okay. Um, but I'll get current contact because I know Terry's got multiple things going on. Um, he's an administrator now and, and he does have somebody running the Center for Global Education for him. So I'll get current contact info and put you in touch with somebody. But if you get a chance, if you get a minute, just look at it and it's spelled the, the Canadian way center um, to find the right one but uh, C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. Okay. Spell, you know, they spell it that, that yeah. way. So um, anyway. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna look at that because that would be super cool. Yeah, you might be able to make some connections with art and, and artists, yeah, some really cool people along the way, so. Yeah, I would love it. Yeah, okay, thanks okay, everybody. Bye.